already been feeling your presence. Song and worship. Praise the Lord. I invite the congregation to remain standing as we call this service to order. And the psalmist said, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Oh, bless our God in people and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Oh, bless our God in and make the voice of his praise Hallelujah. to be heard. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God. And at this time, I invite Brother Calvin Waters and he will do the opening prayer. Thank you. 
Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver me from the smear of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by thee, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come by thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the war of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, nor shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and other. The young lion, the dragon, shall go trampled on their feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore, I, therefore will I deliver you. I will set him on eye, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and yes, honor him. Yes. Hallelujah! With a love life, God. will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah! What a psalm, what a psalm. Let's just praise the Lord. Psalm 91, a household psalm. Oh, every verse, power packed and we can claim every verse for ourselves. And now at this time, the singers will be leading us into a beautiful hymn. He's coming back again. Praise the Lord Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and another time, church. Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to service today. Welcome to our minister. Welcome to our praise team. Welcome to you, lovely saints. And welcome to you joining us on Facebook Live. Is there anyone visiting us for the first time worshiping with us today? First time or second time? Or third time? Praise the Lord. We're all familiar with each other. And today I want to give a special welcome to the students who sat the PEP exams and got their results. May I ask you to please stand? Any students in the house? Praise the Lord. Would you please give her a round of applause? Praise the Lord. So today we're in the sanctuary fellowship here. And one of the purpose of being here is to fellowship. And we need each other. So I'm going to ask that Percy help me sing I need you to survive. I need you. God, 
as our financial partner and believe him for increase and prosperity in all our endeavors. Let's give cheerfully, liberally, and faithfully as we, come, as we are confident that God will give a bountiful harvest. And I will now pray, Father God, Lord, what a privilege We cannot only worship you, Lord, but we can give, give back to you, Lord, some of what you have given to us. And God, we'll never be able to play catch up with you. But God, we thank you that at all times you are there for us. You have protected us. You have filled our needs. You have put food on our tables. You have given us protection. You have allowed us, God, to be in your sanctuary this afternoon. Oh, such a privilege. And God, our expectations are high of you this afternoon. God, we don't look on this service as an ordinary service, God. But a service, God, we will see. See you, God. Oh God, manifest yourself like you have never done and we give you thanks. Oh God, bless every hand that, oh God, will be outstretched to give unto thee. Bless their household, bless their bodies, heal their bodies, Lord, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. And God, we will be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. And our singers and praise team will now minister unto us. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord Jesus, everybody. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! Let's thank us in your offering. We're singing, death have no terror. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we going to sing it with life? Are we going to sing it with belief? Has anybody been storing up a dance this week? Storing up a praise. You don't need to let it go. Praise God. Death have no terror for the blood. 
Aleluya.
on my program, there is a slot that says solo, so I don't want to bring the speaker on and there's somebody who is prepared to be a solo. Is there such a one? <laughs> there is such a one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Ellis. I know he had an anniversary recently. Happy anniversary. Maybe that's why he said it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said that I was going to do solo. But I thought that song was past. <laughs> really. But um, I'm going to sing this song. Lord, I talk to you. Let my life be swayed.
We serve an awesome God, a great God, a God who was planned before even we were we created. Hallelujah, Jesus. His plan, hallelujah. Only God has the bless, the best plan for your life today. Only God has the best plan for your life today. No matter what in your life. No matter how great you think you are, or how even low you think you are, God has a plan for the life that he has set, even before creation. Hallelujah. He know you by name. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is impossible to know or figure out that plan by yourself. No matter how bright you are, no matter how intelligent you are, unless God reveals that plan to you, you can never figure out the plan. Lord said, I know the plan that I have for you. And it is for you to know that plan. It's for you to search and to seek for that plan with all your heart. Amen. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But unless the Lord personally reveal that eternal plan that he has planned for you, your life. You can never figure out by yourself. No education can reveal it to you. No ideas can reveal it to you. No one on this earth can figure out that plan unless God reveal that plan. It's not because you're doing the right thing, meaning that you are in the plan of God. It's not because you, you, can, you can organize the life very well. It means you're in the plan of God. Amen. But it is also obvious when someone is doing the wrong thing that we know they're not in the, the plan of God. Because God will not contradict his word. His plan for us is to glorify and to praise him with all our being. Hallelujah, Jesus. But the Bible said that there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Your purpose is ongoing. Your purpose does not, that does not say, okay, this is your purpose and it ends. That's why it takes a relationship with God to know your purpose. It takes a, 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 a day by day walk with God for your purpose to unfold in your life. And only God can do that. What I mean by this, some people might be a sinner and they say, yo, God, speak to me. I hear God, yes, that's not a lie. God, speak to sinners. But you have to have a relationship with God for that purpose to, be, to, to have a great ending in your life. You will not see come to an end, but unless you grow to have a relationship. And that's why I'm preaching here today to you who don't have a relationship with God. To find a relationship with God. That's how you're going to find your purpose in God. And what God has planned for your life. Bless the name of Jesus. The Lord said to Jeremiah in, verse, in chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly. I for though camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So we see where God reveals to Jeremiah. So Jeremiah knew that God has called me to be a prophet to the nations. Before I was conceived, he knew the plan that he has set. Amen. Amen. Many of us grow and say, you know, I plan for this and I plan for that. But unless you find that perfect, that divine plan 
of God for your life, your life will be wasted. Because that's not what God has planned. It is not you who decide that I'm going to be my life this way. You know, funny thing about it, we have a choice. And God did not force his plan upon us. He did not say you have to do this. And you must do that. But he gave us a choice. Whether we want to serve him. Whether we want to know that plan he has. Because we are not here by chance. God did not speak this idea and say I'm going to create somebody. But he, he knew before he created you, he saw the plan he had for your life. Lift the hands and worship God. What a great God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the story of your life does not start with you. And it will not start. Because it is God who has started that plan. Amen. And while you seek to know God, see the face of God, you will discover that plan for your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, my friend, to disappoint you in any way. Hallelujah, Jesus. But only God has a perfect plan for your life. If you see a life so good, so perfect, and nothing is wrong. And even if something is wrong with you, you can work it out. You can come up with something, you know, you're going to work this out by yourself. Hallelujah, Jesus, in the head. I try to 
fix this, there is a something. It is wrong. It is wrong. <laughs> but you know, many a times we try to fix our life. Yeah. Or we reach at a point in life where we realize that, you know, this is wrong. Yeah. Unless I know God's way for my life. Yeah. Unless I know the way that He ordained me. What I must become in life. What I must do in life. What I must perceive in life. Unless I know the exact thing. I cannot guess my life. Because at the end of the day, if one thing is wrong in my life, I, I cannot go to heaven. If there's 99% of things right, and there's one wrong, God is going to say, depart from me. Our life must be right. Hallelujah, Jesus. But unless we seek God to know that will is purpose for our life. You know, when we look at the beautiful trees, when we look at the mango trees, we look at all those trees yes, outside, we look at the ackee tree. And we see they're bearing so much fruit. Hallelujah. And there, there, there we look at the sun, oh, it gives light to the, to the, to the plants. But unless the sun gives light to the plant, they cannot live. Unless the sun radiates to the plant, it cannot produce sugar. Brought energy to the plant and so it can live. Amen. So without us having the Holy Ghost as a light in our life, we cannot bear fruit. Just like the sun and the fruits, they cannot live without each other. Your life is fruitless. Walking, he saw the tree, the fig tree, and he looked at the fig tree, only had leaves. Yes. And he said to the fig tree, You shall not bear fruit forever because God was expecting that tree to have fruit, He was expecting to walk and to come and to arrive to that tree. and Take up the fruit and eat. Yes. Hallelujah. What if our life is unfruitful? Yes. Hallelujah. What? When God arrives up to our life, he sees it unfruitful, unprofitable. Jesus. So God is seeking for a fruitful life. For your life to produce the fruit of the Holy Ghost. And that's your purpose. Hallelujah, Jesus. God's intention for our life is to shine like the sun and to bear fruit like the trees. Bless the name of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost can radiate from our life. He said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works. And it is so, when that light shines through your life, you're going to be able to produce fruits. Just like the tree. They cannot bear fruit unless the light. And that's the reason why God created light from the beginning of the earth. Before he even created trees. Because he know if he had created the trees then, they couldn't bear. They couldn't live. Because they live off the sun. Amen. So first you have the Holy Ghost alive, the spirit is radiant. And when that reaches to your soul, you can be able to produce, you can be able to get the energy from God to produce fruits acceptable to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Matthew 21 verse 19 says, and when he saw the fig tree, he came to it and found nothing. 
We want God to look at our life and see something valuable to Him. Hallelujah. And when you bear fruit, it's going to make you produce more fruit. Hallelujah. He said if you don't bear fruit, you're going to be cast out and burned. Hallelujah. But when you bear fruit, you are proof to produce more fruit. Hallelujah, Jesus. He goes to say that a good fruit cannot produce bad things. And out of an evil heart come for evil things. Mighty God, Jesus, hallelujah, help us, God. Help us, God. Hallelujah. Mighty God, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is there for us to have us producing and not decreasing, just having leaves, just living our life, just going on with life. Just following behind life on time. Mighty God. I want to I want to encourage us today. Be determined to find that perfect plan that God has for your life. Don't be determined to pursue what you want. Because it can it can be that it is not what God wants for your life. Your goals and dreams and aspiration. Hallelujah. It's nothing unless God reveal it to you. Unless you find that perfect plan of God. The reason why the prodigal son went out of his father's house. He's saying, I'm growing up. I'm feeling mature. And I think I can decide for myself what it is I want for myself. He went to his father and said, Father, give me my portion. I'm going to leave. I'm going to adventure on what I want for myself. I'm going to adventure in what I have in my heart. But the Bible said that the heart of man plans his way. But the Lord order his steps. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not to your own. You might feel wise. You might feel intelligent. Young people, you might feel grown up. You're growing up. Yes. But when it comes to your earthly parents, you have the age of consent. You can decide, you know, parents, I'm going to leave this house. It's time for me. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, a man should leave his wife, his, his parents, and cling to his wife. Amen. No. When it comes to God, many of us want to say that consent. I'm grown up, I feel. You know, I'm out of my parents' house. I don't have to be under them anymore. But remember, with, his, with God, it's different from that. Amen. Your age doesn't determine your consent. Because God has the right over your life. It is He that has made you and not yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you don't walk out of the house of God and say, God, I feel like I'm mature. I want to pursue what I want. No. I believe it is time for me to decide for myself. I'm going to take walk out. But let me tell you that if you had not find that perfect divine plan of God, it's a thing. Because you don't, make a, you don't make a plan for your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lift your hands. Hallelujah, Jesus. So instead of spending time trying to figure out what is it do I want in life? What 
is it that is in my heart? Just spend the time and see God. Hallelujah. And even as a tree, it needs root in the ground. So we need the word of God in our life. We need to grow deeper in the word of God. Understanding the word of God for our life. For us to grow and to bear fruit in abundance. Mighty God. So it's time to, to ask yourself. Why I'm here. Why I'm here. And I'm sure that when you determine in yourself that I must know. I'm not just going to live my life. I must know that plan that God has for my life. God is going to reveal it to you. Amen. Amen. God is going to reveal it to you. Revelation 4 verse 1 says, Where we see heavenly beings gathered in his praise, they're saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created. And there were, there we have it, that God created all things for his pleasure. Hallelujah. That's when we realize that it's not all about us. It's about God's will to be done. Hallelujah. Just stand with me, Jesus. As we are here today, what God is saying to me, what God is saying to my life today, what is it that God wants for my life? Am I living selfishly deciding what I want, what I should do? But God is saying today that I have all that you want. I have all that you should have. I have planned your life.
are not serving your purpose on the earth. That it means your other. What's your purpose? God, God Almighty, I'm not going to preach on it. God Almighty is a self existing one. He was alone in space. Right? In space, He was. All by Himself in space. He's from nowhere. Right? He didn't come from anywhere. You come from somewhere. I come from somewhere. He didn't come from anywhere. He was just there in space. But he, he has feelings. I know he's God Almighty. He has feelings. Right? He think. And uh, he was there alone in space. Then he thinks that he needs company. Then he thinks he needs worship. So he decided to have company. Worship. So that's why he had me hurt in space. Right? And then he made us. We are here. For the purpose of serving Almighty God, worshiping Almighty God. So the preacher put it over to us today. We are here for that purpose. To serve God. God. Now it doesn't matter what your intelligence, your purpose works out. It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter how intelligent you become, how professional you become. Some people are so very intelligent, very professional. They are high sing higher than the earth. Don't they? As if they are rising higher than the earth. But that doesn't make sense if you are not genuinely, genuinely serving Almighty God. You have no right being here. Look at Corona. Corona has like a big time bulldozer. Doing what? Pushing human beings out the earth. You don't notice. That's what Corona act like. Pushing human beings out the earth. Right? And when you look into it, why? Could be they serve no purpose. So you push them out. That's how God act. He do more brutal killing than anybody else. He went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and back up everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah and light the two cities of fire. Think of it. That's who God is. Because what? They were not serving their purpose. Your purpose is the plan of Almighty God. The plan of Almighty God is for us to worship Him, to honor Him, to lift him up, to give him glory, to give him praise. And he's not asking anything to, he's not going overboard because he and the world in the earth in space. And then he made us and put us here. We are in life. This life is what? I went into a business place the other day. I saw them with a sign. Life is Is this life sweet to us? Of course, this life is sweet. Amen. So, 
let everybody find our place in God. Now we can call us and come together because of the laws. But let's stand together, everybody. We are going to dismiss. We give God glory and praise. Thanks for those words. Amen. So let's leave from here with these words on our heart and try to make sure that we are serving our purpose. Not serving your purpose, you are in danger. If you are in danger with God, you know, my words to Peter, don't let, don't allow any clash between you and the wrong one. This will be plainly, a tree of them now. Don't allow any clash between you and the wrong one. Anything can happen. When the police on duty or the soldier, don't allow any clash. Anything can happen. Right? Once you allow a clash between you and them, anything can happen. When comes to the law, don't allow any clash. Because the law is unjust. You can get the blade to hold. Let's stand together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song at least one more time. My soul says yes.
accept you and you, Lord. We pray especially for those that are going to start their exams. Can't see sick. Pressure. We pray against fear. We pray against anxiety. We release boldness.
Brother Errol and Mrs. Dettina Newman will be celebrating their 23rd wedding anniversary. Congratulations to our lovely couples and may God continue to bless their union. This week we say happy birthday to Brother Tape, who will be celebrating his birthday on July 2. Our weekly schedule as projected on Tuesday, our church's day of fasting and prayer, we meet here in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. through to 1 p.m. And then the Whole Life Ministry presents a mini seminar and that will be a Zoom meeting at 8 p.m. And our guest speaker will be Dr. Ishana Ferguson and she will be talking about remaining spiritually connected amazing the COVID season. On Thursday, we join our pastor on Facebook Live at 8 p.m. as we conclude the mini-series, Seven Days of Creation, in the Book of Genesis. On Friday would be our youth service, and this begins on Zoom at 7 p.m. On Saturday, early morning prayer, Zoom at 6 a.m. And in the evening, at your desired time, will be family devotions in the home. God bless you as you stay connected to our Facebook page for and also to your group's WhatsApp page. God bless you. These are the announcements. Oh, Jesus.